Welcome back to my YouTube channel Physios Healing Touch. So today our topic is about techniques of mobilization and it is a very demanding topic. So today in this video I am covering all the lower limb mobilization techniques in which I will cover hip joint, knee joint, ankle joint. So stay with me till the end and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel then go ahead and subscribe it and please like my YouTube video. Now let's start with hip joint. So first we will learn how to perform distraction in hip joint. Now to apply distraction, the patient will be in supine line and then place the hip in a resting position that is 30 degree of flexion, 30 degree of abduction and slight lateral rotation. That means at this position all the soft tissue around the hip joint will remain relaxed and then apply a distraction force. And as you can see to apply traction the therapist body will lean backward and the therapist will use his body weight to apply traction. This was long axis traction but remember if someone has any knee dysfunction or any painful knee then we should always avoid this technique and there is an alternative way through which we can perform this traction. So now let me tell you about that. Flex the patient's knee and then wrap your hands around the epicondyles of the femur and then move backward, lean backward and then apply a caudal traction. Maintain that distraction for 10 to 20 seconds. Now let me demonstrate about the posterior glide of hip. Posterior glide is given to increase the hip flexion and internal rotation of hip. So for this, the patient will be in supine line at the edge of the table and he will stabilize his pelvis by flexing his one leg Therapist will be standing on the medial side of the thigh and then stabilize the distal part of the thigh. You can also use a belt and now place the limb in its resting position that is 30 degree of flexion, 30 degree of abduction and slight external rotation and then apply a posterior directed mobilization force by keeping elbow extended. Apply force on the anterior proximal thigh just distal to the inguinal ligament. Now let me demonstrate about the anterior glide of hip and it is given to increase the range of motion of hip extension and external rotation and it can be given in prone line and side line. Now for this the patient is in prone line again at the edge of the table. His one foot is on the floor and another foot is stabilized by the therapist thigh. The therapist is standing on the medial side of the patient's thigh and he can also use belt to support the patient's limb. Now keep the limb in its resting position that is 30 degree of abduction, 30 degree of flexion and slight external rotation and then apply an anterior mobilizing force. One thing to remember here is your elbow will remain extended and the force will come from your body and it should be rhythmic and not jerky. Now it can be performed in side lying as well. The reason why we have put pillow in between the knees so that the hip remain in its resting position that is 30 degree of flexion and 30 degree of abduction and foot is slightly over the table to keep the hip in slight external rotation. Remember during all these mobilization techniques, the hip will remain in its resting position. One hand will stabilize the ASIS and another hand will be on the posterior aspect of the greater trochanter and the patient will be in walk standing position to apply a proper mobilizing force. Now apply the mobilizing force towards the interior direction. Let's talk about the mobilizations of knee joint. So first we will talk about distraction of knee joint. The resting position of knee joint is 25 degree of flexion. That means at this position all the soft tissues, ligaments around the knee joint remain relaxed and we can easily perform the mobilization. To give distraction of knee joint, basically there are three positions. So first is high sitting, next is supine line and third one is prone line. The patient will be in a sitting position. Now place the limb in a 20 degree of knee flexion. One hand will be proximal and another hand will be just above the malleoli. Then pull the tibia distally. Slowly pull the tibia for 10 to 20 seconds and then release the tibia slowly. Now let's talk about the tibiofemoral anterior glide and it is basically given to increase the knee extension range of motion. 
for anterior glide patient will be in prone line and place the limb in its resting position which is 25 degree of flexion now glide the tibia anteriorly with the proximal hand which is placed just below the knee joint the elbow joint will remain extended and other hand is basically stabilizing the limb now let's talk about the tibio femoral posterior glide and it is given to increase flexion range of motion patient will be in supine position and sit on the patient's foot to stabilize the patient's foot now with extended elbow lean your body forward and push the tibia posteriorly place the heel of your hand on the anterior proximal tibia Now let's talk about the patellofemoral joint. The mobility of patella over femur is extremely crucial for proper knee flexion and extension movements. So that's why mobilization of patellofemoral joint is extremely important. First we will talk about distal glide and it is used to increase the mobility of knee flexion. So this is patella basically and the therapist thumb and index finger will be placed around the superior rim of the patella like this and then the therapist will glide the patella towards the inferior direction towards the toe and be careful not to compress the patella on the femur. Now let's talk about the patellofemoral lateral and medial glide. So it is basically given to increase the patellar mobility. For medial glide, the therapist thumb will move the patella medially. Care must be taken not to apply a lateral force and not to compress the patella on the femur. Now for the lateral glide, the therapist finger pads will move the patella laterally and the care must be taken not to apply a medial force and a downward or compressive force. Now this is the superior glide of patella and, and therapist index finger and thumb will be towards the inferior side of the patella and it will exert a superior mobilizing force like this, like the way I am doing. Let's talk about the ankle joint. So the resting position of ankle joint is 10 degree plantar flexion. That means at this position all the soft tissue around the ankle joint remain relaxed and we can easily perform mobilization. So first we will talk about the distraction. For this the heel will be outside the table and the leg will be completely supported. The therapist will grasp the patient's foot with both the hands and his thumb will be on the plantar surface. Then the clinician will lean backward to apply a distractive force. It will mean he will maintain this for 10 to 20 seconds. Now we will talk about the posterior glide and it is given to increase dorsiflexion range of motion. The heel of the foot will be out of the couch in the resting position that is 10 degree of plantar flexion. My proximal hand will be just above the malleolite to stabilize the leg and my distal hand will be over the dorsum of the foot just distal to the malleolite. First, first apply a grade 1 distraction and then apply a posteriorly directed mobilizing force by pushing against the talus. Now we will talk about the anterior glide of ankle joint and it is given to increase the plantar flexion range of motion. Now in this one hand will be placed over the dorsum of the foot to apply a distraction grade 1 distraction and with the other hand which is placed on the posterior aspect of the talus it will apply a anterior direction mobilizing force. So first you have to apply a distraction and then you have to apply a mobilizing force. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Or ऐसे और भी कोई अगर topic है जो आप चाहते हो कि मैं explain करूँ तो आप please comment box के अंदर उन्हें लिख देना and please like करा करो मेरी videos को subscribe करो मेरे channel को and I will see you in my next video.